Committee. I'm joined by Councilmember Greg Smith. And before we begin, is anyone here that is uh, that would like to speak on an agenda item or in public comment? Please fill out a public speaking card with our clerk. Um, let's see. If we could start with approving items five, eight, and five, eight, and nine on consent. Um, Mr. Chair, there's a speaker card for item number eight. Number eight. Okay, we'll keep that there. So five and nine. On and there's another one for item number nine as well. There's one on nine as well. Okay. Nice try. Nice try, <laughs> says Mr. Smith. <laughs> so five. Five are okay. On consent. And if we could continue item number seven at the request of CD13. And if I'd like to also move items, so on that one item consent, is that okay with you, Mr. Smith? Okay, we'll get that on consent. I'd also like to move item six with conditions, and um, four, five, and six delete. we could remove and delete. Could delete those items, sir. Yes. From the agenda today. Are we continuing them or deleting them? Or oh, deleting the, uh, oh, I see, I, I see what you're saying. I'd also like to move item six with conditions four, five, and six deleted, deleted yeah. for the request of the council office with DOE is okay with that. Is that okay? Um, um, Mr. Chair, just for the record, uh, you're referring to the Board of uh, Engineering Report recommendations four, five, and six, right? Yes. The conditions. Got it. So with we'll dispense of that item, second on that, Mr. Smith? So yeah. Second. Yeah. Okay, that takes us to items one through four, uh, which have to do with special events. And uh, can BSS please come up here? And these all have to do with special events. Um, we have a number. We have two speakers in numbers one and two. Okay. Good afternoon, Tom Carabell, Bureau of Street Services. Uh, before I begin, I just want to uh, notify that. Uh, the, uh, the Bureau is uh, formulating a report that will be forthcoming. Uh, it's supposed to go to uh, Board of Public Works, and that probably will be within a couple of weeks. Um, back in October 2009, ordinance was amended uh, related to special events, uh, making the Bureau the one stop uh, for all special events within the city. Since then, uh, uh, through the first fiscal year, October 2009 through June 2010, we've uh, received 693 applications, uh, 459 permits were issued, and out of the 693, 234 events were actually canceled where the uh, sponsor, for one reason or the other, uh, decided not to have the event. Uh, as an overview for the permitting process, Basically what happens is a sponsor is able to go online or come into our office, uh, submit an application for the event. We take a look at the, uh, the application and we forward that to all the affected departments, uh, LAPD, Bureau of, Sanita uh, Bureau of Engineering, uh, DOT, just to name a few. <clears throat> they take a look at the uh, application and then they respond back to us with whatever the costs are to be able to manage that event and issue permits. Once we get the, uh, those costs, we turn around, we notify the sponsor, letting them know what the costs are for the event, at which time they're, uh, they're required to pay those fees up front. And once they do that, they are issued the uh, permit. Uh, some of the challenges that we've had as the one stop is the lack of personnel. Uh, initially, there were five positions that were approved. Uh, we just recently filled a senior clerk's position, and we're still waiting uh, the rest of those positions to be filled. Uh, one that is, is pending right now uh, through manage, uh, hiring committee is for a programmer. Programmer, uh, very instrumental in our program. We're currently using the program that we used uh, 15, 16 years ago that when that was created. So it's uh, making it very difficult for our staff uh, to be able to process these uh, in a timely manner and to be able to get the feedback from all the departments. Uh, so we're currently waiting uh, for that, those uh, four positions that are pending to be filled. 
that pretty much concludes my report for today. So like I said, there's still ‑‑ You're working on the report, and you will look to provide some responses to some of the motions that we have before us on special events. And I know, Smith, you have one of those motions. I don't know if you want to ask any more. I have a number of questions, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until the report comes back. I just ask that you consider these motions in your report. They will all be addressed. Do you have anything you'd like to add? A couple things to clarify when you come back with this report, and that is on the First Amendment parades and stuff, there seems to be an ambiguity of what DUT says and what the city attorney says and what LAPD says is a First Amendment. So I think we need some clarity on First Amendment parades or events and what is and what is not. We need to have the city attorney really clarify that for us because there seems to be some interdepartmental pushing back and forth on what is and what isn't. That will be addressed. And then on the one stop on the First Amendment issues, it's kind of LAPD's responsibility that maybe that should be pushed off onto them rather than you as the one stop because they're the ones that have to make that determination and they're the main resource for First Amendment issues. So maybe that would get a little load off your back if you say they should do that work rather than you. Right. That's a suggestion. And you've already addressed turnaround time as far as staffing issues go, so we'll see what you come back with there. And then there's another one that really goes to DOT more than you, and that is just the rulings that we have about using public streets for public parking for events. And I think you need to take a look at that. An awful lot of these events need the street for public parking, and it's in our best interest to do that rather than not have a closed street and have people parking in neighborhoods all over the place. So I think we need to recognize in some events the closure of a public street for the use of parking only is in the best interest of a large community. So I'd like you to take a look at that. We'll do that. And consistency here. Yeah. As the other Mr. Smith said. Understood. You guys look alike, too. Yeah. And think a lot. We're moving. Interchangeable parts. Okay. Thank you. I'll go to public comment right now. And as I mentioned, we're going to – when can we get this report in? In about two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. So we'll schedule this in the committee fairly soon. And so I just want to, before the public comment comes up, to let you know that the actual final report will come back to us in about two weeks. So we'll have – we'll actually have something before us to discuss. First speaker on item number one is Estela Lopez. Welcome. Good afternoon, Council members, and thank you so very, very much for this opportunity. I'm going to repeat to you what I testified last week to the Board of Public Works, and that is that with all due respect, I think the changes in this policy were done for efficiency's sake, and they may be working quite well. But in terms of impact on communities, I'm here in representation of the 1,200 businesses in our industrial district. In Skid Row, there is an inordinate amount of special events. Most of them occur on weekends. That's fine. They don't interfere with business. But when they occur on a weekday, as they recently have quite a bit, and streets are closed, some are used for parking, in just a matter of hours, these were the complaints that I received in my office. Our business improvement district officers collected these from a recent event that rerouted traffic, closed streets, and the principal complaint was no notice. You understand our district, Mr. Huizar. It's your district. One-way streets, 18-wheelers. We are a very, very, very busy import-export business district. When you reroute an 18-wheeler that's coming in from the port or a shipment that's coming in from the airport, there's no way to make up that time. When you've got to get product, food product, to the cruise lines at the port, you can't make up that time. When buyers are coming in from the Pacific Northwest, from San Francisco, how do they get around? There was no notice that an entire street was going to be closed and businesses couldn't even get their own trucks in or their employees in. We need to look at this policy as how it impacts business districts. These are not only neighborhood community events. When they happen in the downtown area, in our area, I 
respectfully ask you to look at the impact, the economic impact on our community. Great. Thank you very much. Hey, can I ask you what was the event? The Fred Jordan Mission uh, Back to School Giveaway. And there have been others. That simply was the one that was most recent Which I and that elicited filed, all these comments. I presume the people were filed weeks, months in advance. Like yes, but interestingly enough, you. but it, no, it did. But interestingly enough, the the street closure was not um, the the signs on the streets yeah. said no parking. That's all. It didn't say street closure. And uh, thank you, Ms. Lopez. That's what prompted uh, item number two, a motion to clarify that in our special events ordinance. So hopefully we'll have that addressed when the report comes back. We appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. And now, for the record, we've been joined by Mr. Alarcon. And Mr. Alarcon, we have taken up items number one through four collectively. A report on these items will come to this committee after two weeks, fairly soon. Uh, today, we're taking public testimony. And any other questions you may have or direction to staff? Uh, this would be appropriate time before they finalize the report. Uh, we're still in public comment. Item number two, uh, Sarah Walsh. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you, Chairman Wezar. Um, my name is Sarah Walsh, and I'm here today on behalf of the Motion Picture Association of America and our member companies. Um, while this proposed special events, the new procedures that are proposed would not affect our on-location filming, which is handled separately, as you know, by Film LA, um, they will affect the many film premieres that we hold in Westwood, Hollywood, and occasionally downtown. Um, and our member companies have been doing this for a long time in established locations, and we've developed a routine that we know provides ample notification to the surrounding communities and specifically accommodates the needs of those areas. Um, as you're aware, we do have some concerns with this motion, particularly as it relates to the, the requirement for 14 days of electronic message boards. You know, in some areas there could be eight to ten premieres in a two-week period, and I'm not sure how that would work with these boards. And so we do have some concerns about that. So um, we would appreciate the opportunity to work with the committee on a system of notification, perhaps similar to that used by Film LA, um, that is not overly burdensome or costly for our premieres, but obviously it provides adequate um, notification to the surrounding communities, mostly mm -hmm. businesses where we where we do our premieres. I'm happy to answer any questions. Great. Thank you very Thank much. You. Jimmy Paolo, and we also have Grace Chow. Now you guys, if you want to speak separately, one more of you wants to, has to fill out a, a public speaker after. Go ahead, go ahead, but you could, you could speak and then you could Fill, just fill it out afterwards. That's all I'm asking. Just minute, we need a record. Come on. If you want to do a minute, minute, go ahead. We usually don't do that, but right. go ahead. <laughs> I'll, I'll make it quick. So I'm here representing part of the entertainment community as well as the special events community. I pull a lot of permits with street services, and uh, the, the way it works is we're supposed to have petitions from intersection to intersection, which would be Broadway between 8th and 9th. We do our share of handing out petitions to get signatures. It's 51%, which is required, but I always take it to as much as I can over that, close to 100%. I think by this new proposal of moving us to two blocks, it's going to hurt us because you, you're in, uh, we'd be in a position where we're relying on merchants to sign these petitions for us to have movie premieres, and a lot of times they'll want to charge money for it, and it just puts us in a bad position for that and the message board for 14 days of notification so um, in addition we just wanted to ask you to please consider that there are already processes in place for both Hollywood and Westwood um, as far as we go for um, the street closure committee to request the closures um, there are notifications that are sent out there's the website um, navigate Hollywood that we help subsidize to make sure that merchants, um, vendors, residents are well aware. And the reader boards are already up several days in advance. And as Sarah was saying, there is some concern as far as having them up 14 days in advance. If there's going to be confusion, there are, in, in a two-week period, as she said, multiple events <coughs> in both of those areas and how that would be managed. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. And we'll uh, look at, out for that when the report comes out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Williams. Uh, 
Good afternoon, Council Members. I'm Ann Williams with the Central City Association. Uh, as a downtown-focused uh, business group, we are intimately familiar with the traffic disruption and the general imposition caused by frequent street closures associated with special events. And we certainly appreciate the importance of giving people sufficient notice when streets are going to be closed. So we just have very, a very narrow comment. Uh, we're concerned with the recommendation to require the use of special event message boards to convey this message, and especially that such a message would be required to be in place two weeks prior to the event. Uh, with all the um, activities going on in a place like downtown, these signs would presumably be layered on top of each other in some places. Um, which begs the question, where would they be placed? Would they be on the sidewalk or some other right of way? Um, we're also concerned about the impact that this cumbersome notice requirement would have on the many cultural and special events that we should be seeking to foster and not hinder. For example, last month we saw an extremely successful Ciclovia event in which eight miles of city streets were closed to automobile traffic. So what would this two-week electronic message board notice requirement look like for an event like that? Um, CCA appreciates the sentiment behind the ordinance, but we would just like to see some more thought go into the way it would be implemented and the, the practical effects uh, of the method of public notification that's being suggested. Uh, thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? Well, uh, I couldn't agree with the CCA more. Uh, I hardly ever have an opportunity to agree with them 100 percent. <laughs> Mark this uh, <laughs> I, I really believe that um, uh, there are, in some cases, dangerous unintended consequences here. Uh, and I think the questions raised by the CCA are exactly to point. Um, I'm particularly concerned about the premieres. Uh, there in Hollywood, theoretically, we could have digital signs uh, year round uh, that uh, I'm sure the community would not appreciate. Uh, and, and so <clears throat> uh, it's a very sensitive issue. We, we, uh, uh, the intent of the notification system is to uh, make people aware of uh, potential uh, obstructions and, and, and changes in the community uh, that are temporary uh, to create a more friendly environment. Uh, but if the consequences are to impose other obstructions and other, other uh, uh, obnoxious uh, things like a digital uh, sign, uh, that otherwise wouldn't be there, that, that seems to defeat the purpose. So uh, we need to strike uh, a, a, uh, a friendly balance. Um, the f first off, uh, I would like for, for us to exempt premiers uh, from this process, and that's not to say that I wouldn't support um, uh, other larger changes, but I, I'll wait to see what the report uh, comes up with. I know that Film LA believes that this ordinance would uh, impact uh, film premieres, um, and uh, uh, I, so I would at least like to exempt uh, film premieres from from this uh, proposal, uh, and then be open-minded about uh, exempting other other uh, uh, events. Um, but um, I I'm not uh, I'm not aware. Uh, maybe my district is unique, and maybe we don't have that many events, which, <clears throat> but I know there's a lot of filming that goes on, and and I'm not aware that the community is, is uh, there may be particular communities that have issues, and maybe we should deal with those with special districts as opposed to citywide uh, actions. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, I don't think we're getting the kinds of complaints that would require a citywide uh, uh, notification process to the extent that's being proposed. And maybe if we could look at a um, geographic distinction, um, there are different needs in different parts of the city. That might be something you might want to consider in your report as options, not necessarily saying to do it, but as options, you might want to look at that in your report. And we'll discuss that when the report is available. Great. Well, thank you very much. We'll uh, continue these items is that the proper thing to do so that when the report is ready we'll take them all up again again the reports uh, will be completed in public in about two weeks may um, hopefully not going too far into the holidays but try to schedule something before that uh, if not we'll do it right after the holidays okay, great. thank you very much thank you. next item item number eight eight yeah 
It's the city engineer report relative to the vacation of the alley between Barrington Avenue and Stoner Avenue from Idaho Avenue to approximately 237 feet southeasterly the rock. Okay, we have one public speak. Um, let's take up the public. You could stay there and then let's take up the public speaker. Are you the public speaker? I'm, I'm the representative um, of the applicant. Oh, okay. I have Deborah Rathburn, number eight. Did you fill out a speaking card, sir? Oh, you did. Here it is. Okay. Oh. Okay. Sit down. Okay, sit down. Yes, sit down. Deborah Rathburn. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Deborah Rathburn. On April 7, 2010, I appeared before you to address my concerns and those of Ron Ige regarding Agenda Item 07-1862. Councilman Alarcon heard my concerns, questioned the parties involved, and ordered that dialogue be opened between all parties and mediated by Len Wynn, field deputy with Councilman Rosendahl's office. There have been many meetings, phone calls, emails, etc. The concerns have been addressed in a letter prepared by the First Baptist Church of West Los Angeles. This letter, along with all previous correspondence pertaining to this alley vacation, are being submitted for placement into the Bureau of Engineering files. Ron Ige and myself have no further objection to this alley vacation. I wish to thank Field Deputy Len Wynn, the First Baptist Church of West Los Angeles, represented by Everett Hendrickson and Steve Campbell, Michael Paul's Associates, represented by Michael Pauls and Alicia Lay, Jay Handel with the West Los Angeles Neighborhood Council and Dale Williams, who represented the Bureau of Engineering, for participating in the effort to resolve our concerns. A special thank you to the Public Works Committee for being aware that there were concerns and so ordering that action be taken to resolve them. It is greatly appreciated by Ron Ige and myself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Michael Pauls. Welcome. Good afternoon, um, Councilman Weezer, Chairman Weezer, and members of the uh, committee. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity also to thank Deborah Rathbun. Um, as a property owner uh, involved in this vacation proceeding, she has done an overwhelming amount of work, and uh, I think that the project is better going forward as a result. Additionally, I would like to thank Councilman Rosendahl, uh, Len Wynn of his staff, and the other numerous staff members that have assisted on this uh, alley vacation. The, the vacation request which is before you today is the culmination of over 50 years of planning. Um, the vacation of this alleyway will unify the First Baptist Church of West Los Angeles church school campus, safeguarding children and the elderly attending uh, church services. I'd like to state that uh, we are very proud uh, that we have the support of all of our neighbors um, along the alleyway today going forward. And we are in complete support um, with the clarification letter which has uh, been provided as part of your packet by the council office, by Councilman uh, Rosendahl. And I would also like to make myself available for any questions that you may have. No questions, but we do have Alicia Lay from your same firm. Uh, you also want to come up and speak? Alicia Lay? Thank you. Good afternoon, um, members of the Public Works Committee. My name is Alicia Lay of Michael Paulson Associates, and uh, we're just um, very pleased to be here, and um, um, we're, we're very happy that we'll be able to um, provide you with the update that it was necessary for us to move forward, and I'll be available to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Len Gwynn from Council District 11. <laughs> You don't want to say anything? Step over your head? Yeah. Don't you, want to mess it up. Yeah. Don't want to mess don't it up? Don't want to mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first lesson you learned. It's happened. Um, I guess we'll, uh, we'll move this item. And uh, any uh, conditions? Everything? No, no conditions, right? We'll move this item. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Smith. So ordered. Thank you. Congratulations. Next item.
Item number nine is a city engineer report relative to the vacation proceedings for Keswick Street from San Fernando Road to approximately 440 Westerly the Rock. Okay. The staff here on this item? Edmund Yu from Bureau of Engineering. Uh, engineering is recommending approval for this street vacation. Pardon me? What was that? Yeah, we are recommending <laughs> the vacation be approved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So our, our concerns have been uh, addressed? That's correct. Okay. And, uh, Good job, Edmund. <laughs> Janitra Gidzinko from Richard Watson and Gershon. Good afternoon, members of the committee. My name is Janetta Jovinko, and I'm here representing the applicant, the Burbank Glendale Pasadena Airport Authority. And I simply wanted to make myself available to answer any questions that the committee might have. Great. So, no objections to this item? None. We unanimously approve this and move forward. Thank you. Is that it? That's it. That's Thank it, you. Sir. Thank you all. Thank you for your participation. That adjourns our meeting. There's something definitely in the air today. There's something definitely in the air today. Cheers and all the weird things that happen.